much for joining me again on Onyx Pages and I'm going to be doing a review of The Haunting of Tram Car 015 by P. J. L. A. Clark. Whew, um, there's a lot to say. This <laughs> I have read another, um, actually I think it's right here, the other book that I read by P. J. L. A. Clark is The Black Odds Drums. Um, and there's actually another one that's coming out in the next couple of months that I'm pretty interested in uh, talking about and reviewing. But for now, we will talk about The Haunting of Tram Car 015. So I'm actually going to read the synopsis before I get into this because there's so much to say here and this story makes me giggle. So let me just do that. So Cairo, 1912. This is the first steampunk slash science fiction slash fantasy story that I've read that was based in Cairo, in Cairo 1912, no doubt. So Cairo 1912, the case started simply enough for the Ministry of Alchemy, okay, yeah. Enchantments, and Supernatural in Entities handle a possessed tram car. Soon, however, Agent Hamed Nasser and his new partner, Agent Onsi Youssef, are exposed to another side of Cairo, stirring with suffragettes, secret societies, and sentient automatons. It's a race against time to protect the city from an encroaching danger that crosses the line between the magical and the mundane. Okay, so clearly the, I mean, the mystery in this story is what is happening on tram car 015? Is it actually haunted? If it is haunted, what is it being haunted by? And why is it haunting tram car 015? And how can this government agency that is responsible for dealing with hauntings get rid of it? Okay, so that's basically what this story is about. And we, we are encountering the story from the perspective of these two agents, these government agents that have been called in. So think about like kind of um, Men in Black plus Nisi Shaw's Everfair kind of situation, right? So it's 1912, but you've got these like agents because it's a known fact that there are ghosts and poltergeists and jinns and, and all sorts of other otherworldly beings roaming around in the world and sometimes they misbehave so it's kind of like um, these agents are they're seen as specialists right but it's not like ghosts are a very surprising thing um, but this particular ghost this particular well I don't even know if it's a ghost this particular thing is haunting tram car 015 so we, st we begin the story with um, with the two agents meeting the man who works in the transit authority. He's the one that says that he discovered the entity that was haunting the tram. And he's the one that called in the ministry specialist to figure out what was going on and to see if they could help. Um, and basically in this like 100, I think it's like 120, 140 page novella, we're taken through the world of Cairo, reimagined 1912. So what do we know about Cairo in 1912? According to this world, it's very urbanized. They've got tram cars. They've got like, 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 um, what do you call them? Light, light rails like in the sky. And there's a patchwork of these, of these tram cars that get people from A to B. They, um, <laughs> they, they move really quickly. And, um, and Cairo is this like bustling urban environment in 1912. Um, what we also know about Cairo is that it's a very uh, patriarchal and male dominated society. So women do not yet have the right to vote. And that's a subplot, and that's one of my critiques. It's a subplot in this story because while these two male agents are trying to find out what the hell's going on on this tram car, you've also got this feminist movement of like women in Cairo saying, we deserve the vote, we are amazing at what we do, uh, we are skilled, we're contributing to society, and why do we not have the right to determine who the political leaders are? So that's also a subtext that's happening um, in this in this whole situation. How's it going? All right. Um, so so that's also what's that's also what's happening. Um, so I mean I can't really say much because we find out we find out what's haunting tram car zero one five. 
and we watch the agents as they try to figure out like how to do something about it so these agents are they're funny okay because they're these like men who are very lofty but they actually have to rely on women to help them solve the mystery and their own sexism and their own patriarchy get in the way of them actually finding the right answers because they think they're smarter than they actually are which I'm sure that people don't experience in 2020 with men because we're evolved sarcasm uh, but it was very funny to read like I literally found myself laughing because these men were bumbling they were bumbling idiots um, but they eventually they eventually dealt with it so there was that um, what else would I say about it? I really like the way that PJ Clark um, imagined Cairo. I thought that was really ingenious and I think really apropos because reading it, you might think, well, I don't even know like how could Cairo, how could Egypt have evolved so far? But really, if you take Egypt on the trajectory that it was, right? If you think about how Egypt was a trailblazer as a country in Africa and also has like created templates for science and math and technology um, that, that the Western world has followed. It completely makes sense. Um, but I just, I found that choice curious and I would be interested in hearing more um, interviews with PJ Lay Clark about how um, he did the world building. All right, I also want to show you that I love, like I'm looking at my notes, I, I write things like, I love the lush writing and the descriptions and um, I, I, I don't read a lot about ghosts or a lot about jinn um, and so it was cool to read about like jinn folklore within this story. Um, <laughs> oh, there was just so much laughter at men, you know what, like there were so there were so many inside jokes about like mansplaining and, and sexism and stuff. And I also used washi tape because sometimes I like to beautify my books. Let's just see if there's anything. Um, oh, um, another cool thing that I liked about it was that they had all these different gadgets that these agents used to see ghosts. So they have like special glasses that would help them see specters and and stuff um, and there was a lot of law because um, they were dealing they had to deal with like trespass law and they had to deal with law because the law had evolved to uh, include ghosts and other characters so yeah I'll just leave it at that but it was that was that's all I'll say about the plot. It was it was a fun, interesting uh, read. Okay, so let's get into the seven carry shell um, review. So, first of all, the world building. I would give a full carry shell for the world building because you know Cairo meets like tram cars and ghosts and a very sort of a, 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 a political system that was able to evolve enough to in, to include. A contemplation of magic but couldn't evolve enough to include the inclusion of women in society was really interesting and I think that obviously that was a very deliberate um, choice on the part of the author um, but I thought that the world building was really great and, and really believable and, and described just enough it wasn't overdone it wasn't underdone I think it was great um, to the ca the characters were also very interesting I did not like though that motorcycle. I did not like that the story was told from the perspective of men, even though I found it funny and um, and sarcastic in ways, I really would have liked to hear more from the female um, and women perspective and um, there were no non-binary characters. There's one character who I think is queer but we don't really hear that much about her until later toward the end, like she's a really peripheral character. Um, so the characters were, they were good, they were okay, I would give like a half a carry shell because I think that there could have been more 
uh, more exploration of uh, diversity in that uh, regard. But the characters were well developed, especially the two agents. We learned a lot about them, a lot about their values and um, what they agree with in the world that, that they're in, their frailties, their insecurities, their expertise, and also um, how they feel about women's liberation. And really, we see the characters encountering their own patriarchy, so that was, that was really interesting. Um, in terms of um, the point of view, uh, I spoke to that a little bit when I talked about the characters, but this story is written from the point of view of the, the two agents, which means that the story was written from the perspective of people who um, are privileged, have they have work, they have unique work that's, that's respected. Um, they're also, you know, considered to be um, knowledgeable, while they, while they experience being in danger, while having to deal with this particular entity, like they, they weren't in any societal danger. So it was, it, was, it was fine to read the story from their perspective, but I feel like we get a lot of male perspectives and so that wasn't enough for me. I would have liked um, some of the other characters to have had more of a voice. Um, so I would, I would say only half a calorie shell for that. Because there was a dynamic between the two agents. One was older and was kind of mentoring this new one, and the the, the younger character was more um, more conceited and you know was kind of too big for his bridges. And that was an interesting dynamic. But again, I would have liked to see more in that regard. Um, in terms of relevance, I think that this is a very important story because it asks the question about like how. When a society evolves, what is it evolving? What what stays archaic and what doesn't? Um, here I'm talking about the magic versus women's liberation. So you had these two sub you had these you had the, the plot, which is that there's a haunting of Tramcar 015, and then you have the subplot of women's liberation. And I feel like that story, the actual understory about women in society, that actually should have been more prominent as a as a plot line because it was quite intriguing there were characters uh, that i loved i was so curious about those characters and i wanted to learn more about them and i didn't have an opportunity to um because we were focused on these two bumbling agents so it would have been nice to get more um there but i do think that the question how do societies evolve and which parts of societies evolve that that what is a very relevant question um in terms of options I think that the options, um, there, there was one really important choice that the agents had to make. And the choice was, I mean, obviously their, their goal, right, to the, as the plot um, gets to the climax point, we're really sort of trying to figure out, like, what, what, who, what is haunting um, Tramcar 015, right? So that's how the plot really builds. And then when we get to the climax, the climax is where we discover what actually is haunting it and where there's a battle to see if that thing that's that's haunting it can be captured or can be quelled. And then the resolution at the end. But, um, but really, I feel like... I, I feel like there were... That, that, that the agents could have, right? The plot could have got the agents to kind of think more deeply about this feminist movement that was happening, this women's liberation movement that was happening, and to engage with it more. Um, but I will say that there was this one poignant moment that I will not describe, but it brought tears to my eyes. Like, it was really, it was really a, a, a powerful very powerful movement that really should have had more time, more space. Um, I was emotional about it and it could have been the beginning of a really interesting subplot and it was a missed opportunity. But alas, there we are. So I don't think I'll give anything for options because I, I don't think that the story really explored the right subplot. <laughs> um, yeah, I kept on you know, turning the pages, hoping to hear more about this this woman's liberation movement. I, I heard very little about it. Oh, and also when we find out like how the haunting happened, I just rolled my eyes because it was absolutely ridiculous and silly.
but it was still very entertaining. Um, the next calorie shout is for Otherworldly Elements and I will give a full calorie shout for that because we've got gin, we've got ghosts. Um, even though we're only really dealing with the one entity that is haunting Tramcar 015, we through because the story is told through the from the perspective of these agents, they have dealt with a variety of different kinds of like magical beings. And so as they try to run through their their mental Rolodex of all of the different magical beings that could have been haunting the car or causing the problems, we get a sense of these other otherworldly elements, which is great. So I, I liked it. I would say a full carry shelf for the otherworldly elements for sure. And then over, the overall reading experience, I would give a whole carry shelf for that because this is a fun ride. It was so awesome. I actually did a hybrid read of, read of this. So I listened to it on Audible and I read it at the same time and I marked it up and it was just great. So I would uh, recommend this to individuals who are interested in reading, um, you know, like this, I think this would be considered, according to what Nacy Shaw has told me, I think that this would be, well, they didn't tell me that this book was Afro-retrofuturism, but they introduced me to the concept of Afro-retrofuturism, and I think that's what this is, because it's a story that's told in the past, but that imagines a more futuristic, um, like, uh, time period. So the 1912 um, is technologically advanced. Uh, 1912 Cairo is technologically advanced. So yeah, I, I enjoyed the read. I would definitely recommend that you read this. And um, P. Jelly Clark is just a wonderful, um, descriptive writer. And um, this was absolutely an enjoyable read. So yeah, I would recommend that you take a look at it. If you have watched this all the way to the end, I would love for you to um, put like a ghost or something kind of spooky, something that you think would, would be capable of a haunting. Um, or a tram car, so or both, or maybe like a ghost and a tram, a tram car. Oh, and maybe the number zero one five because because why not? We're doing we're doing it up tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Read with purpose, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.